Hi guys, welcome to the second part of our discussion on introduction to business combinations. Uh, this time I have here a problem about acquisition of net assets. But before we begin, if you did not catch the discussion portion, check down in this video's description. There is a link to the first video down there. Anyway, let us now proceed. So, business combination through acquisition of net assets. First of all, uh, ang reaction po ng students pag nakakakita ng problem na not so short, ano? If the problem was as short as this, siguro you would not normally panic. Pero as soon as you see a problem na ang daming details na convoluted, ano? parang ganito, tapos mayroong pagbigay na financial statement, your first reaction is panic. Well, do not get intimidated by problems like this, ano? Kasi they can be necessarily taken in chunks. So, maybe we'll understand this one first. And then we'll analyze the second part. And that should be the time after makuha natin yung dalawang yan. Doon na tayo magbabasa ng financial statement. Okay? This is not particularly a long problem. Pero, again, we have that tendency to get intimidated. Yeah. Requirements are, una, what is your acquisition cost? Pangalawa, what is to be included as business combination expense? And third is, what is the fair value of the net assets of Wilson? Actually, ano to? FINA. Fair value of identifiable net assets ni Wilson. FINA. First is AC. Compute AC. Compute expense. Compute FINA. And then compute goodwill. Which if... You have learned something in your previous video. Goodwill is simply AC minus FINA. So let's get to it. Acquisition cost. Ano to? Ito yung mga ibinayad natin to the acquiree. Directly to the acquiree. They are the ones we paid for acquiring the net assets. Business combination expense naman is all directly attributable costs that are not acquisition costs. They are expense. With a few exceptions of course. FINA, ito yung mga natanggap natin na assets and minus the liabilities na inassume natin in exchange for this business combination. So, yan, goodwill is simply the difference of your acquisition cost and FINA. So, let's start. Let's go ahead. AC. On January 1, 2020, Maxwell Inc. acquired the net assets of Wilson Company by paying cash of 600,000. Identify. Ano tong cash na 600,000 na to? Maxwell acquired the net assets of Wilson. So, Maxwell is our acquirer here, right? Okay, Maxwell, ikaw ang acquirer. Ano-ano ang acquisition cost ni Maxwell? Una, nagbayad tayo ng cash of 600,000. So, that's already part of acquisition cost. Together, uh, this is paid directly to Wilson together with a 10% interest bearing note of 150,000. So, ito po ay... Acquisition cost pa rin. So, 600,000, 150,000, they are both components of acquisition cost. That is payment of cash and a promise to pay cash or liability, that instrument. In addition, Maxwell also issued 5,000 of its own shares with a par value of 100 and market value of 120 to Wilson Company. So here, Maxwell nagbayad ng cash, nag promise to pay, nag-issue pa ng additional shares. So, we have cash payment, we have a promise to pay, and we have a, an equity instrument. Question, is this part of acquisition cost? Maxwell's own shares issued. Answer, yes po. Acquisition cost can take the form of equity instrument, debt instrument, cash, or non-cash assets. Yan po ang pwede natin include. Another could be, contingent consideration can also be part of acquisition cost. But we'll talk about contingent consideration in a future problem. Not now. Here, uh, 150, 600, liability na 150, plus 600 na cash, memory plus lang natin yan, then, the ordinary shares of 5,000, ano ang gagamitin mo? 100 par or market value na 120? Answer, 
120 po ang gagamitin. Why? IFRS 3, lahat ng assets na ibibigay at matatanggap should be carried at fair value. They should be recognized at fair value, I mean. Even the liability should also be expressed at fair value. So yung shares na in natin, yung 5,000 na yan, it should be includable in your acquisition cost at 120 each. 5,000 times 120, I get 600,000. Coincidentally, that is the same amount as your cash paid, ano? Pero again, that is a just a mere coincidence. We get 1,350,000. So that is your acquisition cost so far. Binasa natin to and it turns out the first paragraph was ano ang ibinayad ni Maxwell to Wilson to acquire the net assets. They are totaled to 1,350,000. One, Next part. The acquirer also incurred the following. 40,000 to a broker. Now this is directly attributable costs. Label lang natin to. This is directly attributable cost. They will be expensed soon. Yung kanina, they are components of acquisition cost. Legal fees. The same, this is also directly attributable costs. Sec filing fees. Uh, ano to? Stock issue cost. We'll talk about stock issue cost soon. Pero for now, know that they are not expensed. They are reduction of your share premium. Okay? Directly attributable costs, they are specifically provided in IFRS 3 to be charged to profit or loss or expense. Ano to? Well, sir, di ko magets kasi they are payments naman, di ba? Normally kasi pag DAX, kapag directly attributable cost, they are included in cost of the assets kapag nag acquisition tayo, di ba? Pero again, let me emphasize na sinabi po sa standard na if it is just a directly attributable cost, it is expense. So if you would consider, is the 40,000 paid to Wilson? Hindi, di ba? Meaning hindi siya direct payment. If it's not a direct payment, it's not acquisition cost. It is a directly attributable cost, but it is not capitalizable as AC. It is going to be expense. So take this as a rule. Kapag DAX ang isang expenditure, directly attributable cost lang, it is expense. Legal fees as well, you're going to have that as an expense. Kasi again, the logic is, it is not a payment made to Wilson. It is a payment for something else. Next is SEC filing fees. Now, this is not DAX. This is uh, only related to the share issue. So, it's not going to be an expense. Consultant fee, however, that is also directly attributable cost. Yan. So if we are going to count ano-ano ang mga expense dito, bullet 1 is expense, bullet 2 is expense, and bullet 3 is expense. Bullet, ay, bullet 4 is expense. Bullet 3 is not expense, it is charged to share premium. More on that later. Okay, so... So far, we have discovered na unang-una, the first paragraph is AC. The second portion is expense and stock issuance cost. And let's go down to the financial statement now. Wilson had the following account balances. Oh, okay. This financial statement is Wilson Company's balance sheet. And it shows all the assets and liabilities na inacquire natin. In short, these are components of FINA. Now, I will not go through them individually, pero know that the rule in business combination is all assets and liabilities exchanged in a business combination should be carried at their fair value. So, Wilson Company... Itong mga assets na in natin from Wilson Company, they will be recorded in the books of Maxwell, the acquirer, at the fair value. Ito po ang gagamitin natin na values. 
The book values don't matter to Maxwell because they are simply Wilson's record. What matters in business combination ni Maxwell is the fair value. Ito ang ire-record ni Maxwell. So to answer the requirements. Requirement number one. Actually, nasolve natin kanina ang requirement number one. Ano? That's 1,350. So, cash, note payable, ordinary shares, for a total of 1,350. Your ordinary shares will have a share premium of 100 with common stock 500,000. 100,000, 500,000. Pero again, the answer here is 1,350. Requirement 2. What amount was charged to business combination expense? So as we have analyzed earlier, it's bullet 1, bullet 2, and bullet 3. And they sum up to 40, broker's fee, 60,000, legal fees, 30,000, consultation fees, for a total business combination expense of 130,000. Again, final. Emphasize. Directly attributable costs in a business combination are expensed. Now here, the SEC filing fees will be charged to share premium as follows. 10,000, di ba? Ito yung third bullet natin kanina dito. That is now going to be charged to your share premium. Pero take note, itong share premium reduction na to, it is not accounted as part of your acquisition cost. Your acquisition cost still remain at 1,350. Remember ha? It does not reduce acquisition cost. It will be a later reduction in your share premium lang. Separate. So we have business combination expense at 130,000. Next requirement, fair value of identifiable net assets of Wilson. Uh, FINA. Insert na lang identifiable dito. I need to emphasize that kasi po the assets of Wilson include goodwill. Maybe Wilson had a previous acquisition as well. So meron siyang goodwill na 40,000. Pero that goodwill of Wilson will have no value to Maxwell. It will have no value to us. Which is why if you would observe, fair value is zero for that goodwill. Why? FINA is fair value of identifiable net assets. And if you would look at goodwill, it is defined as an unidentifiable intangible asset. So it, it's, it's actually specifically excluded in the term FINA. Okay? So remember that. Kapag may goodwill ang assets ni acquiree, that is not included as part of your FINA. So AC, FINA here, expense here. So computation ng FINA. Ito po. All of these are fair values. Check back mo na lang. These are the assets excluding goodwill. And all of these are fair values of the liabilities for a net amount of 1,250. So just review then in this problem set here. Yan. And that brings us to our last requirement. Compute the amount of goodwill. So, ano ulit? Goodwill is simply acquisition cost minus FINA. Our acquisition cost, 1,350. And our FINA is 1,250. Which means that your goodwill is simply the difference between the two. So here are the supporting journal entries for the problem. So as we can see here, the goodwill is debited at 100,000. That is because the difference between the acquisition cost of 1,350,000 versus the fair value of identifiable net assets of 1,250,000 is this one, 100,000. So The following items are components of your acquisition cost. Ito po yung mga binigay natin. Ito yung mga value parted with natin. So you have here the 600,000 cash. You have the 150,000 notes payable. 
share capital and share premium. The 5,000 shares issued at 120 pesos market value. Also, you have here the fair value of the assets that we received as fair value of identifiable net assets, assets received, as well as the liabilities assumed. So ito po yung acquisition of net assets. Also, we have related expenses, yung four bullets earlier, which first, second, and fourth bullet, the legal fees, the broker's fee, I forgot the last one, they constitute as expense. And here is the SEC registration or filing fees, 10,000. Share premium, charge yan. This is actually a reduction of the share premium that we have for this issuance. Yan, stock issue cost will be charged directly against the share premium from the issuance. So all of this will be recorded in the books of Maxwell, the acquirer, of course. So there you have it. So that's it, guys, for this problem. More problems to follow in our future videos. Have a great day and thank you for watching this video. I'll see you again. Take care and bye-bye.